Just to recap, Detective, when we left yesterday for clarity of the record and for the jury, I believe we had, we had spoken about your visit with Lori Vallow on November 26th? Yes, we have. Did you, in the, the next day, help in searching Lori Vallow's apartment? Yes, November 27th, 2019, with a search warrant, yes. Yes, the bedroom, bed, a bath and closet area on entering. I know the clothing left in this uh, closet shower. Detective, we just heard you say there was no clothing left in that closet, correct? Yes. Was that of note to you? It, it made me think that the uh, occupants, because of our day visit before, left in haste. When you went into uh, 174, was there anything that stood out to you? Something that struck me as odd as, as we were searching. Um, so this was Melanie Boudreaux's apartment. Um, at one time, she was married to Brandon Boudreaux. Um, I noticed that on the counter, she had a, if you will, a three-ring binder with those uh, clear plastic organizers in there. Um, and I thought it was odd, because I knew they were divorced, that um, she had numerous of his credit cards and driver's license. Did you participate or... Uh write warrants for any cellular or uh, or digital evidence in this case. I did. And you've spoken about lolly time forever? One of Lori's uh, Gmail accounts, yes. Did you ever have occasion to look at the search history on it? Yes. Were there any, uh, any searches that stood out to you through your investigation? Uh, yes, there were a few that uh, brought me concern. Right. Um, I'm gonna, was there a search on August 25th that interested, or that was of note to you? Yes. What was that for? So on August 25th, the user of this account, which the name on the account was uh, Lori Vallow, the user of this account on the 25th um, looked up um, wedding rings made of malachite. And on this same account, Lolly Time Forever, did you, was there anything that you noticed in the search history on September 20th? Uh, so on the 23rd, uh, when we believe JJ was deceased, um, on the 20th, knowing, uh, well, the user of the account looked up the definition and meaning of possessed. And, and to clarify, I don't know if I did this before, Lolly Time Forever, who was that account associated with? Uh, Lori Vallow. Did you do any searches on the account of chad.daybell at gmail.com? Yes. And was there anything in the search history of chad.daybell at gmail.com that caught your attention? Yes. Uh, it would have been September 8th, 2019. The user of chad.daybell looked up uh, what the wind direction was going to be for the following day, which would have been the 9th. And in the course of your investigation, why was that of, of note to you? Because we believe on the 9th um, was the day uh, that Tylee was, uh, her body was burned and buried in the fire pit behind Chad's house. Another day of testimony began with jurors seeing more police body cam video in the Doomsday Prophet murder trial in Idaho. Chad Daybell is accused of killing his first wife, Tammy, and the two children of his current wife, Lori, JJ, and Tylee. Now, testimony earlier today was from a detective who questioned Lori about JJ's whereabouts, but JJ, of course, was nowhere to be found. After returning to her apartment the next day, Lori was gone. Now, jurors got a chance to see body cam video inside the apartment. FBI Special Agent Steve Daniels is on the stand right now. So let's get back into the courtroom out there in Idaho. This picture shows. On the bottom, it just shows the city of Rexburg, and it shows the Salem Church where the ERT team mm -hmm. staged the morning of June 9th, 2020, prior to the search warrant execution. 
And at the top, which is north, and it'll be north on all of the uh, pictures that we show, it'll, it shows the Chad Daybell property. And just to clarify, you, you were part of the search there on June 9th, correct? Correct. I was the ERT senior team leader. All right. Uh, Agent, I'm going to start with uh, the house on the property. Can you describe what you see in, in this picture? And Your Honor, this is State's Exhibit 170 VV. This is just an overall photo showing the front door of the residence, which is located on the west side of the property. Okay. And can you explain what you saw in this picture and where it was taken? This is just a vantage point photo, and it was taken on the second story level of the residence, which is right about there. And the picture is taken outside of this window and it's just looking towards this large tree. And that's in the area of where we found JJ Vallow's human remains. And then in that photo, you see a trailer there and that's not typically there. That's a law enforcement trailer. And where was this photo taken from? This is another vantage point photo from that same window on the second story of the residence. And I'm pointing to it with my laser pointer. Um, and it's just showing, it, it, we've just changed directions a little bit. So now it's showing some of the outbuildings. We call them outbuildings. So a chicken coop, another shed, and then there's a larger garage or barn in the background. And just past that garage is where we had, uh, we found Tylee Ryan's human remains. And then over to the right, I'm trying to point to it with my laser pointer. And this area is the area of where the fire pit was located. And then there's another law enforcement vehicle right here that typically isn't there. And with these vantage point photos, we're just trying to show uh, the perspective. If you were a resident in the home, these are some of the what you would see looking out of the home. Judge, could I have a listing of what what picture number that was last? That was 170TT. All right, thank you. And Mr. Wood, if you'll try to reference yes. those each time, thank you. And this next picture is 170WW. Agent, if you can tell us what you see and where that was taken from. This is another ERT photograph, another vantage point photo from the residents and it's looking through a kitchen window. And this time it's still pointing to the east part of the property. And this time you can see kind of that area of that large garage or barn. Uh, eventually we'll see better pictures of that barn, but this is the area where there's a large garage door. So the entryway to that barn. And then on the, what ends up being the southeast corner of that garage or barn there's kind of a man door so from this photo you can see the entryways to that large garage and then past that garage again was where we uh, end up locating Tylee Ryan's burial site and then just to the right is the area of the fire pit and your honor this photo is 170SS if you can just briefly describe what, where that was taken from and what you see. This is another ERT photo, and it was taken from one of the bedrooms on the southeast portion of the residence, and it's another vantage point photograph. And as you look to the east of the property, again, you can see the outbuildings, the entrances to those outbuildings. You can see the entrance to the garage. There's a garage door in this area where I'm pointing. And then there's a man door, can't really see it, but it's in the southeast corner of that uh, garage or barn. And then you can see the top part of the large tree. And in the at the base of that tree in that area is where we found uh, JJ Vallow's remains. And then just past the large garage is where we found Tylee Ryan's remains. And just in this area is where the fire pit's located. 
<laughs> and your honor, I misspoke. That was picture 170XX. Okay. And agent, you testified earlier about how when you got there, you picked out some areas of uh, interest. Can you, with your pointer, show the, the jury where those areas were? Prior to arriving from our aerial images that we saw, like satellite imagery, this was the area of the fire pit. So we knew that was a priority area. We were going to look for a pet cemetery, which we didn't know where it was on the property yet. And then uh, we had some telephone ping information. One of those pings was in the area up here where I'm trying kind of circling. Uh, JJ's human remains end up being found where that orange uh, rectangle is. And our pet cemetery ends up being found in this area right here. And that square ends up being Tylee's burial site. But at the time prior to arrival, we didn't know that was going to be exactly that that was going to be Hailey's uh, burial site. We didn't know exactly that was going to be JJ's burial site. I'm going to click on this fire pit area and click on show measurements. Can you explain for the jury what those measurements are? So initially when we arrived, we had two team members that were designated to go to the known fire pit and start assessing what are we dealing with on June 9th. And so part of that assessment, they started observing ash um, on the ground in the area of this fire pit. And they started setting up these this grid. So this outer portion that I'm highlighting right now is the outer perimeter of the grid they set up. And the reason they did that was just because of the ash that they could see on that ground in the vicinity of the fire pit. And with the grids that they ended up setting up, they set up, they just kind of quadranted out. So they made a quadrant here, a quadrant there, one right here around the fire pit, and then the fire pit actually became a quadrant. So that was just an easy way for us to kind of designate and search each of those individual quadrants and search the fire pit. And we'll get into that in a minute. And it just, when we as we collect those items from each quadrant or grid, it's just an easy way for us to kind of document where things came from. And then in a minute, we'll show some photos of a charm that we located. And that dot right there is, is where we, the approximate location of where we found a silver charm. And we didn't get an exact measurement to that charm, but with our total station, uh, measuring tool that I described earlier, we total stationed in all of these outer points, the perimeter and inner points, like just where these corners meet of this grid. And with our, our operational project unit was later able to take a measurement from that northeastern corner and then take a measurement. We, this uh, fire pit ring ends up being center blocks. So at each end of each of the center blocks, we took a total station measurement. So from those measurements, we were able to get a precise measurement of that northeastern corner to one of the ends of our center blocks. And so that's the measurement you're seeing there, 33 feet, one inch. And so you get an approximate distance of from the northeast corner to the fire pit ring. And so we're at least able to show you an approximate distance as to where that silver charm was located. So, at Agent, I'm going to click on these photos. And your honor, this photo is 170CCC. Can you explain for the jury what, uh, what this vantage point is? This is just an overall photograph showing an as-is photo. And in this photograph, once we were there, we could assess that this was an area or I was able to assess that, hey, this is probably where our pet cemetery is. And I made that assessment based on, there was a small dog statue right there at the bottom of that pole. And then in front of this dog statue, there were some discrepancies to the ground or some depressions. And so I was quickly able just to make a pretty decent sized square 
in this vicinity and get a team to start processing that area. And that's what we called our pet cemetery initially. And then in the background, you can kind of see where the fire pit area is back here. And so that's just an as is photo showing what that looked like initially. And this photo. And this is just an example of that the the piece of the measuring equipment you see in the middle there, that's our Ferro scanner. Um, it just sits on a tripod. And then this fluorescent tape that you can see around on the ground, that's the team starting to create those grids. Oh, that you can see over on the left side here. So this the creation of the grids, and then you can see our Ferro scanner starting to take scans of that area. And Your Honor, that's States Exhibit 170FFF. It's incredible. The body's buried right outside the back window of the house. It just boggles the mind. It boggles the mind. All right, we do need to take a break. When we come back, we're going to hear testimony about evidence collected where J.J. and Tylee's remains were found on Chad Daybell's property. Keep it here on your front row seat to justice. Tonight on Closing Arguments, diving deeper into the murder case against Karen Reed. Prosecutors say she hit her police officer boyfriend with her SUV while she claims it's all one big setup. So she said, I hit him. She repeated it. We'll bring in experts to weigh in as this highly divisive trial continues. Closing Arguments with Vinnie Politan tonight at 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV. All right, folks, before we head back to court, let's bring in criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Franz Borgart, because, of course, it's Friday, and that means it's Franz Borgart. Franz, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me, as always. Um, i got to say, listening to the testimony, we, the jury has already heard it. We've heard that the, the bodies were buried in the back of, of Chad's house on his property. But seeing the burial area outside the back window from the main house so close, so within eye shot, I mean, to me, it was just extremely powerful. So it's very cold. It's very callous. And there's a certain amount of audacity, right? You're, you're, it's in your backyard. You, you could have you hid these bodies anywhere, but they're right here. They're right in your backyard, right outside the window. And look, proximity to the house doesn't help this guy either, right? So I don't, I don't really understand. I don't understand what what the thought was with burying it so or leaving the remains so close maybe there's like i like i said maybe there's a certain audacity that there was a lack of caring a lack of i don't care where i put these human remains that all being said that all being said michael it's a big property what was the thought i don't know uh notwithstanding that notwithstanding that finding the remains so close to the house really does help the state yeah, I've said from the beginning, Franz, once this jury found out that these two little children were buried on his property, it was a done deal. I don't think they're ever going to get away from a conviction as far as those two go. Now that we see, he could basically see where they were buried out of the back window of his house. I, I mean, I'm doubling down on that. I mean, this information here, I, I think there's no getting away from the conspiracy to kill these kids. So that's, it, you're, you're, you're spot on, Michael. I mean, the fact that they're right there, it is, it, is, it is such power, there's such a power in that evidence because again, it's, it's as if he was trying to hide it in plain sight. And again, if the, if the bodies were at a corner of this very big property, one might argue, well, those bodies could have been left there. They could have been abandoned there. You know, there at least would be some kind of an argument. But the fact that it was so close to the proximity, somebody would have had to bury them in that proximity without Chad Daybell knowing about it if you believe he didn't himself do it. Right. So I, I think it's a it's a slam dunk for the state at this point. Exactly. Now, like you said, had they buried at some other part of the property, then he could have claimed, hey, that's something they did on their own. How am I supposed to know what he was doing back on those acres of my property? But right there, it's just you can't you can't move away from it. All right. Franz, stand by. I want to get folks back into court right now. FBI Special Agent Steve Daniels is testifying about evidence collected on Chad Daybell's property where the bodies of J.J. and Tylee were found. 
FF. And this is States Exhibit 170BBB, as in Bravo. And Agent, can you describe what you see here? And knowing that there was a fire pit and knowing that that could be a place where we could find, potentially find evidence, we processed this fire pit and we wanted to show this photo just to talk about that a little bit. So this is an as is photo of what this fire pit looked like when we arrived on June 9th. And the way we're gonna process this fire pit is we're just gonna process it layer by layer. And I'll probably say that a lot today, but we're gonna process this layer by layer. We're gonna take that initial top layer of tree branches out of there, uh, look through it for evidence. And then eventually when we start getting to the soil and debris that's in the fire pit, we'll start processing that soil and debris. And we've got a particular way that we'll process that. Um, we set up, we put a tarp down and then we have sifters. So we have wooden sifters and in within these sifters, we have a uh, wire mesh. And then on top of that tarp, uh, we use five gallon buckets. And so eventually we'll get shovels and usually end up scooping out the different soil, the layers of soil into these five gallon buckets. And then it's a team effort. So the team members will start taking the soil to the sifters. And it's usually a two, at least a two person operation. Uh, one person's required to operate the sifter. Uh, you kind of have to shake it back and forth. And at least one person has to pour the five gallon buckets of soil and debris into the sifter. And then you start watching uh, to see what your sifter, what you're collecting. And then we'll start, if there's anything valuable that shows up, we'll start collecting that. So that's kind of a quick explanation of what that process is like. And that sifting process is done at the fire pit. Eventually, when we start identifying the burial sites, we do a sifting process at, at, at JJ's burial and at Tylee's burial. So that's a, a common sifting process that's done throughout this scene this day or these days. And your honor, this is photo 170-AAA. And agent, can you uh, tell the jury what's going on in this photo? And this is just, we're, we're continuing that process I just described. So those tree branches are obviously gone. We're at a new layer. And then we're just continuing to go through these different layers. And that process I just described would be happening. And then as we're going through that soil, and we're sifting the soil, we're gonna start collecting evidence and we'll start to see some photos of that in a minute of what we start collecting. And then this just is this closer to being finished processing the fire pit. You can see that we finally taken a rake. You can see the different lines through the soil. So we've raked a lot of that final layer. We've removed even the center blocks so we've kind of getting close to completion here, but that's what it looks like kind of when you're done. And then a lot of the outside grids, they most likely didn't have any sifting done in those outside grids, but this raking process was probably done on those harder surfaces and usually just a visual inspection of the harder surfaces with some kind of raking tool um, is all that would be required to see if you can see any evidence. All right. And your honor, that was photo 170ZZ. Detective Wood is, and your honor, this is photo 170YY. Uh, agent, what did you, what did you observe in this photo? This is a Pura Vida chain that was collected from the fire pit. So from that sifting operation that we did, this is one of the important pieces of evidence that we collected. And so this is the type of things that you will find when you do those, sift through all of that soil and debris. And then other things that were collected from the fire pit were possible bone fragments, possible organic material. There was at least one uh, po possible fabric piece and a possible cloth piece. And I'm using possible because at the time we're doing this out there, a lot, of, a lot of the smaller things that we're finding in fire pits 
we can't we can't make the determination on scene. So for a lot of that stuff, we'll just collect that and then later. All right, we're going to squeeze in another break. Uh, when we get back, you're going to hear testimony about evidence collected on Chad Daybell's property, and it's going to be about human remains. We're not talking about they start finding human remains. Keep it here on your front row seat to justice. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Michael Ayala. We are continuing our coverage of the Doomsday Prophet murder trial in Idaho. Chad Daybell is accused of killing his first wife, Tammy, and the two children of his current wife, Lori, JJ, and Tylee. FBI Special Agent Steve Daniels is still on the stand. He's testifying about where Tylee and JJ's bodies were found on Daybell's property and about evidence collected at those sites. Let's get you back into court. We'll send that to a laboratory to get determinations. Judge, can I voir dire a native objection? Uh, you'll have to wait till another question now, Mr. Pryor. <clears throat> An agent, what did you observe in this photo? This is the silver charm that was collected, and it's the one that will reference back to this red dot in the measurement screen over here at the northeast area. And, and so, your, your Honor, I'll just for the record, that's 170DDD -D -D as in Delta. And oh. as, the, as the team was setting up this grid, this was one of the first pieces of evidence that we collected on June 9th. As they were setting up this grid, they ob observed that silver charm just outside of our grid perimeter. All right. And what, what, what is that photo of? These are, this is just a closer view of that charm in place on the ground. Thank you, Your Honor. That's 170GGG. And what do, do you observe in this photo? This is the same charm in place. We've just placed a, a placard. And obviously, this is item number one. So that was the first item collected. And your honor, that's 170HHH. And this is 170III. Can you explain what you see there? This is it. Now we've moved it. We've just put it on a piece of paper and with the same close up photo with scale. Okay. Your honor, the court has uh, states exhibits 175 and 273. We'd ask that those be provided. All right, we'll get those. And then while they're getting that, if the state could be handed to States Exhibit 6. Submitted. Which one's, what's that? Okay, we have six. Did you also want 175 and 273? Yes, those are two pieces of physical evidence that were brought in. Oh, okay. And you want those brought in at this time? If that's possible, Your Honor. Yeah, we can do that. So we've got some physical evidence um, that's going to be brought in at this point. I'll 273. ask the bailiff to please coordinate that.
And Your Honor, I might inquire now. These these next two items are smaller items. Do you want them placed on the table, or uh, can they be given to Mr. Daniels on the stand? Um, let's get them admitted first before they're handled, and then uh, I, if they're smaller, I don't mind if the witness uh, is able to handle them. You want to allow defense an opportunity to view those yes. and then we'll mark them, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. All right, um, you can see um, Chad Dable talking. He, he's been very, I don't, I don't want to call him animated. I think that would be going just a little bit too far. But you see him regularly looking at evidence, talking to his attorney, involved uh, in his defense. Um, in this particular instance. All right, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll the All right looks like they're going again. Let's get back into court. This time when you can inquire in aid of admission, if you wish, Mr. Wood. Thank you. <laughs> Agent, do you recognize uh, what's been marked as State's Exhibit 273? Open these or? Your Honor, may he, may he open those to identify the, um, without showing to the jury to identify the content? Yeah, and um, we do have gloves up there if you'd like to wear those. I don't know if that matters to the state. And I think he's, I think he's wearing some. Okay, didn't see that. Thank you. I recognize these. What what does it purport to be? It's uh, the Pura Vida chain and the silver charm. Okay, uh, and which one was marked as 273? The Pura Vida chain. Okay, is that the same chain that was collected from Chad Daybell's residence on June 9th, 2020? Yes, it is. Your Honor, I had to ask that uh, State's Exhibit 273 be entered into evidence. Any objection? No right. objection, Judge. All right, that objection, then that was 273 is admitted. And then uh, can you identify State's Exhibit 175? Yes. What does that purport to be? It's the silver charm. And is that the charm that y you and your team recovered on June 9th, 2020? Yes, it is. You recognize it to be the same? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'd ask that uh, State's Exhibit 175 be entered into evidence. No objection, Judge. Very well, 175 is also admitted. And Your Honor, we'd like to show those to the jury. I don't know how the court would like that. Uh, we do have plastic baggies they can be placed into, so nobody's actually handling them. Um, if you want the witness or the bailiff to show it to them. Uh, you can do that either way, Mr. Wood, or you could also probably uh, project an image of them with the Elmo. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. All right, while there's a little bit of a lull in the action there, we'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to hear more testimony about specific evidence collected that belonged to Ty Lee. Keep it here on Court TV, your front row seat to justice. Everyday people, just like you, accused of the unthinkable. He needed to eliminate this person. This is, in fact, a murder. Accomplice to Murder returns with an all-new season. I know the manipulation. I know the lies. Taking you beyond the ringleaders. This is somebody he trusted. And into the heart of the case. 
they were in this together. Accomplice to Murder with Vinny Politan. All new season premieres Sunday night, 8, 7 central. Only on Court TV. Welcome back. We do want to get you back inside that doomsday prophet murder trial in Idaho as special agent, uh, he's with the FBI, continues testifying about evidence collected on the defendant's property. So let's get back into court. Agent, can you describe what you found in States Exhibit 1273? This is the Pura Vida chain that was found inside the fire pit. And then on this end right here is where it says Pura Vida. And was it, was that actually in the fire pit? That was in the fire pit. And then the team found that when we were conducting the sifting operation that I described. Your Honor, honor for the record, I'm now publishing State's Exhibit 175. All right, 175 is being published. Can you describe what you see there? That's the silver charm. And that's the charm that was found in that northeast corner, just outside of our grid perimeter. And that was seen on our exhibit, indicated by that red dot over by the measurement area. And Your, not, your Honor, for the record, I'm now publishing State's Exhibit 6. Agent, have you seen this image before? I have. Do you know who that individual is? Tylee Ryan. Uh, the, the do you see her wearing any jewelry? I do. Does that jewelry resemble or look like the jewelry recovered from Chad Daybell's property? It does. Thank you. And Your Honor, if I can go back to the HDMI. Okay. Agent, I'm going to click on this area that's been marked as Site 2. And what was Site 2? Site 2 was the burial site for Tylee Ryan. Your Honor, this is photo 170V. Agent, can you describe what the jury is seeing in, in this photograph? This shows our initial Pet Cemetery site and I'm kind of highlighting it with the uh, pointer. And you can see the dog statue. Uh, this was the area that was right in front of the dog statue that I initially said was the pet cemetery. We ended up finding a, a dog remains in this area right in front of the statue, and then cat remains in this general area. Once, and we processed that area initially by hand, kind of doing a layer by layer approach. Once those remains were removed, we utilized this backhoe. And the backhoe in this picture has started to go deeper in our initial um, excavation of the pet cemetery. And now the backhoe started to expand that initial site and go north on the property. And that's what we're seeing in this photo is that expansion northward. And what we'll end up finding is Tylee Ryan's burial site 
will be in this just north of that initial pet cemetery area. And your honor, your honor, I think at this point, um, you talked about turning off <clears throat> the uh, publishing of these photos, publishing of the photos to the public. Okay. This may be a good place. Going forward here, there's going to be some. All right, so at this point, there was a decision made not to show the rest of the photos to the public. The jury, of course, will get the opportunity to see those photos. Let me bring back in our guest for this hour, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor Franz Borgart, still with us. Franz, you know, those photos will show, you know, human remains, bones, etc. But I'm not so sure that they're going to be as effective as what we just saw. You saw the necklace in the bag that was found on the property, then they showed you a picture of Tylee with that necklace on. I mean, that to me is more powerful than showing me some bones. And I mean, clearly those are powerful, but I thought that was very powerful and more powerful than maybe any other evidence. So what he could have done with the, with the necklace, instead of putting it on the projector, instead of putting it on the Elmo, is I would have had each one of those juries pass it around, even if it's in a little baggie, Michael. I would have had them look at it and touch it because they can't do that with the remains, right? They're just gonna look at pictures of the remains. The remains are, are human remains, right? And we're not gonna gloss over the fact that they were basically left with dead animals. So they weren't really, the, the message is these weren't really important children. But I would have had those items passed around to each individual juror so they could touch it and see it. And it's so humanizing in such a way that a picture just can't be, right? Notwithstanding all that, I agree 100, 100% that those things, those things that they just went through are gonna be more powerful, uh, especially because they were so neglectfully just left in the yard next to the pet cemetery. So uh, I think I think this is just hugely, hugely damaging for the defense. Yeah, you know, it's like when you think about the way the bodies were desecrated, the things that were done to it, I mean, there may be some explanation in their bizarre beliefs or whatever, but it was just awful. And then to see these things, as you said, just kind of carelessly thrown in along with the bodies. I mean, all of it just adds up. Now, we're about 45, 46 witnesses in to the state's case. Do you think they have the goods? I mean, it's clear I think they have the goods, certainly on the kids and the conspiracy, but he's also charged with their murder as well as the murder of Tammy. So how do you think they're doing overall? Oh, I think they're doing exceptionally well, Michael. I, I, I think they certainly have the goods, so to speak. Now, that would be, that, that, notwithstanding that, does, does the defense have some kind of theory of innocence that they can put forward that they can somewhat substantiate? Because right now they have to explain to the jury how this could have happened, one, without him knowing about it, right? They have to, to, to get around the conspiracy, they have to say that he didn't know about it, that, that it, she was doing all this stuff and he was just a blind fool and he had no sense of it. And the problem they have is this guy is a puppet master. This guy is a cult leader. How do you, how does he not know what's going on? Yeah. So yeah, they absolutely have the goods. And unless in the absence of some kind of theory of innocence that's somewhat plausible, uh, I don't know that there's reasonable doubt here. Yeah, I would have to agree. And, and in my mind, as far as who he is, has changed completely over the last week or so in terms of him being the puppet master. So I agree. Franz Bogart, thank you so much for being with me on this Friday as always. Truly